thinking about it, and I was like, thinking, oh, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? Rape. And then I started to tell some stories, and the look on my faces around the table was like, holy crap, I can't do that. That's so gross and depressing. So, I'm not going to do that. But, uh, <laughs> it was a thought. So, uh, then feminism came to mind. I thought, you know, I am the proud daughter of a feminist who was born in 1922, and she wanted to join the army. Her father dragged her home by the hair. And then the second time, when she was actually old enough to join the army, Women's Army Corps, without his consent, he forbade her to do so. And um, that was in a time when women did as they were told. In fact, one of the first fights I remember my mother having with my father, who was born in 1918, to show you a, a different mindset that my parents grew up with, he uh, came home from work and mom wasn't wearing a sundress like she normally is. And he said, Marge, what in the world are you wearing? She said, slacks. <laughs> <laughs> he said, slacks? Where's your sundress? You look so pretty. I love to come home from work and see you greeting me at the door in your sundress. She said, well, if it's good enough for Catherine Hepburn, it's good enough for you. <laughs> bus boycott, mailed them down in box loads because the folks were walking everywhere, right wearing out their shoes, and um, we wanted to keep all the folks supplied with shoes. So my father forbade my mother to go. He said, I'm scared for you, Marge. You'll be a, a, a target. You'll be the only white person there. A sea of black faces, and there's an assassin's bullet waiting for you. I can't <laughs> allow it. I can't allow it. So, of course, we all gathered about the tele television and watched the March on Washington. And every time the camera would pan the crowd, my mother would leap up from her chair and say, look, there's a white person. Look, there's a white person. <laughs> <laughs> so, needless to say, I'm proud to be the daughter of a feminist. Yay! <laughs> In fact, when I was a child growing up, I was a boy. I thought I was a boy. I had a tailored army uniform. I was in hell. I was only five years old. but. All the kids wanted me on their team because my daddy, after the end of World War II, or was it the Korean War? I don't know, he served in both. He took the periscope from his tank and brought it home. And so that was in my toy box, and all the kids wanted me on their army team. <laughs> <laughs> I could see around the corners with the periscope. <laughs> in fact, at parties, people would say, Oh, Sibby, that's what my family called me, Sibby, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I would say, Boy. <laughs> I really thought, you know, if I wanted and tried and thought hard enough, everything would grow, you know. So, <laughs> my mom would roll me aside and didn't work like that. And then the last time I, uh, I think, was a child of about seven, um, someone asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, oh, a doctor. And unfortunately, they made the mistake of saying, why? And I said, then I can look at naked women. <laughs> <laughs> because I could no longer run around without a shirt. I didn't have anything growing, but, you know, it was time to face facts. And although Daddy sent me to ballet dancing and uh, um, sent me to finishing school, and I learned ballroom dancing and all of this and makeup classes, not that I wear any, but, you know, what did I do when I graduated high school? I joined the Army! Mostly for Mom, because, you know, she always wanted to go, and I really did join the Women's Army Corps, of course, I did it on April Fool's, and when I said, April Fool's, you no, he took it off, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was seven, I was, my father was a litigator for the AFL-CIO in Cleveland, Ohio, and there was one big, huge talent show in all of greater Cleveland, which is really the biggest city in the whole state, even though Columbus is the capital, Cleveland is the largest city in the whole state. And we had this huge, at the Cleveland Arena, this Huge competition, all the people's kids signed up to do whatever they wanted to do. What did I want to do? I was only seven, it's 1962. I wanted to be Elvis Presley. 
And I tell you, I slowed that turntable down to make out every word, every note, so I could play my guitar, walk out on stage in my dungarees and my dungarees jacket, and sing, Don't you step in my blue sweatshirt. <laughs> and I love If they come upon you in the news. 